Welcome, Derek Rydell here, founder of The Law of Emergence and author of the best-selling books, Emergence and The Abundance Project. And it's great to be back here at, on this series, Matter Versus What Matters. And it's a multi-part series. I, this is the sixth part, I believe. And we're talking today around the concept of what kills more, science or religion. And I want to just put a little disclaimer in here. Many of you are used to me doing a lot of... Uh, conversations about that are very inspiring and motivating and transformational and how to live your life's work and live your purpose and tap into your deepest soul and and have more power more wealth more health harmony all of those wonderful things and that's absolutely a foundation of all the work that I bring you but this series and 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 what will be coming more and more in the future is we also need to learn how to think and how to perceive reality and to have a better model of perception, a better model and map of reality. No matter how many good strategies or tools you use to uh, win friends and influence others and achieve or you know, achieve goals or manifest more abundance or whatever the case may be, if your model of reality is limited or your, the way your mind has been conditioned to perceive reality is very limited, you're still going to get lost, you're still going to get stuck, and you're not going to be able to go beyond your present map of reality and identity. And all real change and innovation in our life and in the world, real evolution must be preceded by some break with our previous map of reality and identity, okay? Whether through crisis and tragedy, which is often what causes it, or through a conscious process of opening up the aperture of our awareness to things that may be confusing and to ways of perceiving that may not be our current habits. And so the matter versus what matter is a series on how to begin to think differently, how to begin to perceive and process differently and open and expand our ability to be confused, which means to be where two ideas that seem to contradict themselves are becoming fused with fusion confusion with fusion and it's a high state on the path of growth and progress but we haven't been learned to find comfort and even excitement in that confused state in fact we've gone quite the opposite where all nuance is being eradicated from conversation and communication where increased polarization it's black or white it's left or right you're good or bad you're right or wrong you're in this tribe or that tribe you're either with us or against us and that is all founded on the fundamental false dichotomy of good and evil, which promotes and perpetuates all of our suffering. And it's only increasing. And if you want to be a change maker, a thought leader, a leader, a transformational individual, artist, creator, or just be free in your own life, you must learn how to think differently, how to perceive differently. So that's what this series has been about. And so what kills more science or religion? This is connected to that, and I'm going to get to that right now. So it's obviously a provocative statement, but I'm saying it because science is in the camp of rationality, reason, the age of enlightenment, and people get confused by this. The enlightenment was not a spiritual renaissance. It was a rational renaissance. It was a renaissance of bringing God down to earth or getting rid of God, as the famous line um, I'm drawing a blank on who said it, but that God is dead. That wasn't a triumph. That was a cry. Oh my God, what are we going to do now that we don't have that? That we are now a society of reason and rationality and that it's all about the individual and the human and the human mind and science. Now, to be very clear, that's a good thing. Science is good. Rational, reasonable thinking, left-brained, good. The masculine, which is about order and structure and accomplishment and progress in matter, good. It's all good, fundamentally speaking, principally speaking. What it was, was it was a counterpoint to the dark ages and to the where religious ideas and ideals had gotten out of control and we were killing each other over religion and we were losing our ground with reason and rationality and we weren't making the progress in the realm of matter that we could make. And so science was born as a counterpart to ground the grandiose 
religious and religious authoritarian perspectives of life and also make what was theologically based something that was more practical and that we could actually use to progress our human life and improve our human life. So, so rationality in science is great, but we also have to understand that matter does not fundamentally and only come as the, it's not the foundation of what matters. That what matters is foundational to matter, meaning matter is not merely an emergent property of consciousness, or rather, I'm sorry, consciousness is not merely an emergent property of matter. What matters does not by, by necessity come from matter. This is the big you know, scientific argument. But in fact, most evidence really points to there's something more substantial, more foundational, and out of that matter arises, okay? Out of the right brain, more left brain logical thinking arises. Out of the feminine life force, new matter, new life forms are birthed. Out of what matters, matter is born. Out of something invisible, something visible appears. Out of what is immeasurable, that which is measurable appears. Now, again, scientists and rationalists will argue with this point, but there's very much evidence. Occam's razor, which is what is the most likely uh, answer, really does point to everything came out of nothing or no thing, out of something that we have not yet fully learned to measure. But in quantum physics and in certain realms of science, they're starting to get down to the idea that it's consciousness. There's something that is energy and information that is not matter, even and especially the atom itself is 99.999% energy or invisible or nothingness, and it forms the building block of everything that we see. So I'm standing on the premise that matter comes from what matters, that, that matter is an emergent property of consciousness, but I'm not saying that matter doesn't matter. And this is the mistake that the right side, the religious or the spiritual gets is it then it eschews all science all reason all rationality it polarizes so the atheistic rational scientific polarizes from anything it can't measure if i can't measure it it doesn't exist and it's crazy even though out of theological beliefs science was born that's the great blind spot and even the scientist that believes that eventually science can solve all of our problems, that is not a scientific statement. That's a theological statement. That's a statement of faith. I don't have the evidence. I can't see it. I can't prove it. But I believe science can one day solve all of our problems. That's a statement of faith. That's a theological statement. It's an artifact of religion and spirituality, of the spirit and the soul. But science, but the scientific or rational or atheistic mind, the left brain cuts itself off and polarizes and says all religion bad, all spirituality cuckoo, all you know, beliefs in something you can't see, touch, taste, or measure, crazy. And so, so grows that movement of pushing against uh, that, that right-brained, soul-based, spiritually inclined, what really matters versus matter. But again, likewise, re the religious or the spiritual or the more feminine based will do the opposite. It will reject the masculine. It will reject order and structure. It will reject reason and rationality and polarize into now what we're beginning to call conspirituality, right? That's the conspiracy theorists and the people that go down the rabbit holes that reject all scientific data. It's all a conspiracy. It's all false. None of it's real. Trust your heart. Believe in your spirit. And there's no such thing as truth. Every, everybody has their own truth and nobody lives in the same reality at all. And nowhere will the twain meet. Again, it's a polarization. Both are polarized. And, and then they can say, this is what's good and this is what's bad. This is what's right and this is what's wrong. So I want you to see it's the same energy or the same unconscious survival mechanism of a need to categorize and polarize. But we have a right and a left. Now, if we look again rationally, science very potentially has killed more people than it's saved or many more people than is, we talk about. 
Just the medical sciences alone kill over a quarter million people a year in error. In error, meaning science is very destructive. Militarily, and the weapons, and all the way science has been used for war, has killed millions, tens and tens of millions of people. It's killed millions and millions and millions. It's also created a te technologies in social media and internet and all these media technologies that are supposed to be for our greater good. But we see rates of suicide have increased since social media started, et cetera, et cetera. So the point I'm making is science is as flawed when used by humans, is as dangerous and destructive. Rationality alone is dangerous and destructive. As we can see, we build a high-tech, low-touch society. We build more and more technology that's less and less in touch with a deeper soul technology or meaning or what really matters, and we put ourselves on the verge of destroying ourselves over and over again. And some, of course, believe there was a world called Atlantis that destroyed itself for the very, that very reason. Whether that's true or not, the metaphor works. We can see ourselves hurting ourselves profoundly through science and technology. Now, it also has done a lot of good things. It's provided ways to feed more people. It, but it's, it's not clear that it has actually solved our biggest problems because with every new technology, it creates new problems. Because at the root, if you just take a pure left brain, scientific, rational view of the world, it has no morality. It, there's nothing intrinsic in it. It's just about understanding, managing, and manipulating matter. If they're going to be honest, that's what it is. If you're gonna say nothing exists apart that which can be measured. Now on the other side of the, of the equation, religion and all that, and the feminine or the, and again, this is not a knock on women, I'm just speaking principles. The, the sort of religious or conspiratorial or fanatical, spiritual, sort of activist, feminist, socialist kind of mentality, which is anti-rationalism often, has also likewise killed tens and tens and tens of millions of people in the great socialist movements, in religious crusades, not to mention done tremendous damage to the psychology of people with religious fanaticism, terrorism, um, anti-women, anti-gay, et cetera, et cetera. So we can see religion as a, as a thing to take seriously. There's severe bugs in the code. If you follow the religious texts as code, you're going to create programming that's gonna be very destructive in some areas, but we can also see it is the foundation of democracy, it is the foundation of civil rights. Not science, not rational thinking, but a deeper morality, a deeper values base that is not scientific, that is not material, but that is actually comes from the root of the great revelations of mystics and messengers from history. We can trike, trace the evolution of civil rights, women's rights, you know, um, rights of people, democracy, the rise of that comes more from a religious standpoint and then moves into a philosoph philosophical standpoint, which becomes a little more rational, and then eventually we have science. So the point I want us, I want us to understand here, and I'm gonna to get to where it, what it means for you, is that both the left brain and the right brain on their own are destructive. The left brain will end up destroying people, the right brain will destroy itself and other people, the, the masculine on its own is destructive, the feminine on its own is destructive, the science on its own is destructive, and, it's, and the and, uh, spiritual or religious ways of thinking, uh, more emotional, ephemeral-based thinking is destructive. Separate from each other, they destroy, it appears even potentially, more than they ultimately create real progress. Again, I'm not making a scientific case for this, but there's a lot of evidence. Just medical error alone, <laughs> The, is the num medicine is the third greatest killer out of all diseases. I want you to hear that again. The number three killer of people is medicine. Now, again, I'm not, also, I'm not advocating for anti-medicine. I'm not advocating for anti-vaccine. This is not a political statement. But, but medical error, medical malpractice, 
scientific error in the realm of medicine is the number third killer of all people. In fact, it might be said that it's more dangerous to go to a hospital than it is to stay out of one. That's not me merely making a joke. That's very likely accurate. So when we start to hear this rationalist argument against that, that rationality is the end all be all, we're hearing the cry of the wounded masculine, of the wounded left-brained archetype or masculine, right? Likewise, when we hear that all systems and all structures and all order, and by the way, that's also the conservative, conservation of structure and control and order. When we hear the, the cry of down with all structure and order, down with society, let's tear it all down and rebuild it in a utopian fashion, or it's all about the man and the conspiracies of these powerful cabals, and all of that is the wounded cry of the right brain or of the feminine, right? And so we wanna notice that, and we wanna notice that, as I've been saying lately about politics, we see it obviously in the left and right side of the parties of politics, but it's the, same, it's the same problem. It's why politics is failing in so many ways and has become even more polarized. We see it in medicine versus you know, rationality versus religion. We see it in science versus spiritual or more activist sides. We see it in politics and it's the same polarization, the left against the right. And as I've been saying lately, you cannot fly without a left and a right wing. And what we see in society and the damage and destruction that both religion and science are doing to the world and to us and the damage and destruction we're doing to ourselves by polarizing on either side of the left and the right, brains or politics or society, is we are all a bunch of wounded birds trying to fly with only one wing and it will never work it will consistently cause problems and prevent our real progress. That we must learn to adopt and embrace a whole-brained, whole-souled, whole-selfed approach that recognizes there isn't a right and a wrong. There are two sides, if not more sides, to every conversation and every equation and every argument. And you will never solve the great problems of the world or allow for the greatest progress in the world if you are on one side or the other, ever. That you must embrace both that which you cannot see, but which matters most, which is more foundational. And then you must apply it with reason and practicality and measure twice and cut once. You must be willing to plumb the depths. And again, if you look at the greatest revelations in science, it always started with a more poetic or exploratory or mysterious or open to the great mystery. And then like an Einstein, and then they were turned into more scientific, you know, theories and proofs that could be turned into your iPhone. But, 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 that, that kind of understanding of life, that map of understanding or that model of understanding that produces an iPhone upon which I am now communicating with you, which is a wonder, is not the same model of understanding that produces this talk or that produces the value this talk will bring you. They are two models of understanding. Again, the model of understanding and the science that comes from it that produces this iPhone that allows for this wonderful opportunity to communicate is not the same model of the world that allows for the content to matter to you and to have value in your life. Being able to produce an iPhone is great, but it will not solve the biggest problems of your life and it will not make your life ultimately matter. It will not make your life have real value and purpose. It can support that purpose, but it will not give it purpose. Likewise, all the technologies that help to give us food or help to heal our bodies scientifically or help to create greater economies, although I don't see that happening yet, all these technologies that, that allow us to wash our clothes quickly and order food fast and order things online fast, all have utility. 
But none of them, I want you to hear this, none of them actually give our life meaning. None of them give us what matters most. But when we know what matters most, when we're anchored in what matters most, in our deepest values, in our deepest vision, in our deepest purpose, in our deepest heart and soul, when we're anchored in that and we adopt a model of the universe that includes that, and then we embrace the model of the universe that shows us how to move atoms around, move matter around to support what matters. Now we've got an integrated model that can actually create a world that works sustainably for everyone, including the flora and fauna we share it with, you see? And, and in your own life where your greatest struggles are occurring, I want you to begin to look and notice where have you polarized? Where are you rejecting one side or the other? Where are you stuck too deep in one side versus the other? Where are you stuck for perhaps more in an emotional state, believing just because you have emotions, that means it's true, <laughs> okay? That means you're stuck on the right side or the feminine side, you're stuck in chaos, and you are not giving much honor to order, to reason, to really having deeper understanding of what's going on, right? We see that happen with the movements in the world, Black Lives Matter, Me Too, et cetera, where one side and the other polarize. The, the, the conservative side of the politics will polarize around more reason and rationality and point out that statistically there are way less violent acts happening to black people, way, way, way less cops, that black people kill, them, kill each other way, way, way more than cops do, and that's factually accurate. But they lack the emotional empathy and the deeper spiritual and philosophical implications of the state of psychology of black Americans and what it's like to live under that fear and that threat. They, they miss that whole side of the argument and they polarize. And, and the other side of the equation, it's all emotional, it's all a reaction. It's, I feel this way, therefore I deserve this, therefore it's true. I'm seeing these images on social media that's affecting me this way, therefore it's true. And all rational thinking goes out the window. Don't tell me about data and facts. If you say, here are the facts, you're a racist, <laughs> right? Or a white supremacist. And on the other side, if you say, here is my emotion, you're just a crazy, left-wing, liberal, or spiritual, conspiratorial, you know, whatever. You see? And we're not, we're not connecting with each other. But I want you to see that that's a symptom of what's going on inside of us. That we are not embracing both sides inside of us. We don't have not developed, if we are very rational and reasonable, always, and controlling, we are lacking a deep emotional intelligence and an ability to be with that that, is, that matters even though it's not factually true. Like in a relationship, you know, the man, and this is, I'm being uh, cliche here, you know, the man that's like, why are you so upset? I'm showing you factually how this is not true. I didn't do this, or this is not what's happening. Come on, snap out of your feelings. And, and then making the woman in this case, in this very silly cliche example, you know, you're not hearing me. You're not understanding what I'm feeling. All, all you want to do is show me the facts and that doesn't matter. What matters is what I feel. And that fight escalates and escalates and neither party feels seen or understood. One party thinks the other is crazy. One party thinks the other is heartless. And they're both right because the person that's caught in their emotion has gone insane mentally. They're not, they have no reason, no rationality. They are locked in an emotional contagion. And the person that is stuck in their head and is being the lawyer is cut off from their heart. And so we have to learn to have both a heart of gold, a soul of steel anchored in truth and wisdom and knowledge and an open mind, open heart, strong core, open mind. We need to integrate both sides. So wherever, wherever you're at, if you're having fights with your partner or you're noticing that there's that conflict and polarization with you with family, friends, associates, or with the world, or you're just stuck in some chronic challenge, I want you to listen back to this, maybe listen to the whole series, and notice where are you polarizing? Where are you believing that just because you feel it, it must be true? 
or just because these are the facts that that's the whole truth. Or, or you're not willing to look at the facts or you're not willing to look at the feelings. Where are you cutting yourself off from the full range of your integrated potential? From the deep soul wisdom to the deep heart emotions and feelings and empathy and compassion and the cry of love inside there to the great power of the intellect and the wisdom and the facts, all of it connected gives you a greater understanding of the truth. Matter versus what matters eventually is matter plus what matters ultimately creates a map of reality where we get to live a life that is deeply meaningful and progressive and a world that increasingly works for the greater good of the whole. So I want you to look at that in terms of your relationships, in terms of your work, in terms of your relationship to the world. And I invite you to share this with friends where you may be having arguments on one side or the other of this equation as a way to bring the conversation together. We're not separate. We really are all in this together. We've just polarized because of this polarized way of modeling the world. We need the scientists, the rationalists, and even the atheists. We need the conservatives and the Republicans, and we need the liberals and the religious leaders and the spiritual minded to all come together and listen deeply for the truth and the nuggets on both sides because there's not separate sides here. There's one life, one mind, one being that's emerging as the many. And even that sounds woo-woo, but it's really not. We know in quantum physics, there's a unified field out of which everything is emerging. So I invite you to listen again, watch again, share with your friends. If you want more content, please listen to the whole series and check out my podcast, Emergence, where you can get more deep dive trainings and inspiration and motivation. You can also check me out on YouTube for the same kind of things. You can also go to DerekRydell.com and get lots of free trainings there as well. But please share this with friends, family, colleagues, so we can start to have a mutual, wherever there's openness or willingness, we can start to bring people together into a conscious conversation that, that integrates these seeming polarities into a much richer, much more nuanced, much more valuable conversation that ultimately converts us into a state of wholeness and a world that works for all. I love and appreciate you for being here. Until next time, remember to live authentically, love unconditionally, and follow your destiny.